Thanks to everyone joining today. One of the beauties of doing a clearly a, a virtual session is you don't get to see the the mess, the Lego, and the the the, char the children's toys that are around this room against this this white screen. Before I start, I just want to put on record really my thanks to Michael uh, and and the team at Legion World for for persisting with this conference through pandemic, through all the lockdowns that we've had. I think I've been talking to Michael about this conference and what we might do for the lead gen sector and i've spent most of my career going across to cross atlantic to all these great you know lead gen conferences in the states and i was so determined that we could try and do this and bring this here to the uk um michael's been absolutely resolute uh to persist with everything get a virtual conference going and as he says you know next year we'll, we'll actually be meeting in person so um, um so thank you michael I'm going to talk about the future of British lead generation um, and the wider European performance marketing sector. I'm going to talk about some of the sort of standout winners and standout leaders of our sector, uh, as well as some of the challenges. Um, I'm happy to take uh, questions. Uh, I know Michael's going to be collect collecting them. If anything comes up during the talk that actually, you know, you think actually I'd like to, I'd like to pick up with, um, my details are here and they'll also be at the end of the presentation. So let's 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 get straight on. So the Legion industry is changing and it means different things to different people. I'm going to use this talk today to talk about what I think are the, the big, big challenges for the sector, the big, big opportunities for the sector. Um, and I'm going to talk about sort of three main, main, main areas. Um, after I've had a look at who are the main players in, the British, in British Legion, I'm going to look at the challenges being thrown up by compliance. The TCPA, the Telephone Customer uh, Consumer Preference Act in America, revolutionized the American lead gen space. It put some businesses out of business. It brought some businesses into play. And I think something very similar is about to happen here in the UK. I'm going to talk about what's holding innovation back. I think, you know, lead generators often get the blame for, for, for doing certain things and for, for, for cutting corners, but actually, what I'm going to talk about today is that I think we need a bit more of a concerted pressure on lead buyers to change their technology to help us adapt to a changing world. And finally, I'm going to talk about getting to good customer outcomes, using performance reporting in a way in which helps us generate better leads for better customers. A very quick, quick, but about me, a sort of uh, a, a quick intro. I, I've worked all over the world in lead generation. Um, started my career in California with LeadPoint um, and then started a business with my business partner, Matt Edwards, uh, a business called Efinity Leads in, in the UK. And we were a really successful, uh, one of the first directly authorized lead generation agencies. And we scaled over a period of six years before we were acquired by Financen, the German marketplace for leads. I think one of the things that I noticed from all of those experiences was that when I was in the US, we were talking about lead fraud. When I was in Germany and, 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 and France and Switzerland, we were talking about lead fraud. And we've been talking about lead fraud here in the UK for a long time. So contact state uh, was my, uh, my answer to what, what this industry might do to, to tackle lead fraud and help legitimate lead generators work with really good lead buyers. I got together with my business partner, uh, Mike Laming, and now we're a team of technologists, marketeers, and, and data experts. And our unambiguous mission is to raise the standards of lead gen in Europe and make it easier for good legitimate lead generators to work with lead buyers. These are some of the lead generation businesses that operate in the UK space. Now we think there are between 300 and 400 lead generation firms in the UK at any one time. Um, and these are some of the standout leaders in a number of different sectors. You've got businesses here that focus on finance. You've got businesses here that focus on car sales. You've got uh, some in, in, uh, renewable energy lead gen businesses here. And the point I'd make, uh, and the point that uh, I, I tell anyone who wants to listen is that Lead gen has changed dramatically in the last 10, 15 years. There used to be one or two businesses that were the standout leaders. Now, 
a lot of these businesses have significant amounts of venture capital or private equity funding. A lot of these businesses are 50, 100 million pound businesses. If you're looking at this presentation and thinking about the European lead gen sector for the first time, you do well to go and have a look at some of these, some, some of these firms and see the sort of landing pages and the product, sort of products they, they run. Um, I think the message that I'd, I'd take anyone coming to this presentation, coming to the lead gen sector for the first time would be uh, that there is a, an amazing amount of talent and innovation that goes on in the British lead gen sector. And I think, as I've already said, that, that, that my experience of sort of 10, 15 years, I've really noticed the shift away from the id individual sort of bedroom affiliate, the one sort of one, one person business, through to far more advanced boutique, smaller lead gen firms that are popping up in all of these sectors that you can, you can see here below. I'm not gonna read them out, but these are, if you're looking to see where lead gen, lead gen activity goes on, these are the sort of sectors that, 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 that lead generators are involved with. So that takes me nicely onto our sort of first discussion point for, for, for today, and that's regulation. If, if you're unfamiliar with the British regulatory environment, um, I think the message that I'd give to you today is things are changing and they're changing rapidly. Again, I'll use America as my example. Lead generators were essentially regulated out of business by the TCPA, by changes to higher education marketing, and by changes to debt, debt marketing. And my, my prediction is that within two years, we're going to see the same dramatic landscape shift. Now, if you're new to this, there are three regulators in the UK that you need to be aware of if you're going to generate leads. First, the, the, um, the uh, Advertising Standards Authority, the In Information Commissioners Authority, Commissioner's Office and the Financial Conduct Authority. Now, if you're gonna generate leads, you need to be registered with the ICO, that's the data uh, commissioner, and they govern all data exchange in the UK. Next, if you generate financial leads, pretty shortly, you're gonna to have to be registered with them as well. And then finally, you wanna try and stay as far away as possible from the Advertising Standards Authority, because if you get called up by these guys, it means you've done something wrong. What I think is, is interesting, uh, and certainly from, from, from my experience, is that for the first time that I can remember, lead generators are losing business because they don't have these compliant boxes ticked. They think that actually, you know, they can just get, get around them or um, they're, they're not paying enough attention to what's going on. That's only gonna increase. Um, and, and as we get further into the talk, you'll see why. There are three main elements of compliance that are shaping British lead generation. And there are three rulings in the last three months that have had the, probably the most significant impact. First of all, the, 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 the ASA. The ASA ruled last month that a, um, essentially a lead, a lead buyer who had hired um, an affiliate to run campaigns for them were directly liable for those misleading adverts that that affiliate ran. Now the lead buyer in question, Flexible Digital Solutions, had no knowledge of those adverts, um, but the ASA decided that that wasn't good enough. They hadn't, that in their view, they, more due diligence should have been done to protect um, rogue adverts being run. This is a, a big, big shift, and it's the first time we've seen anything like that sort of TCPA style intervention by a regulator. It now means that buyers are directly liable for the adverts that lead generators run, and this is having serious impact uh, as we speak. The second big ruling was the ICO. The ICO fined a business called Chameleon Marketing because it, the, this business ignored the telephone preference service, um, the, the function that allows consumers to opt out of, of cold calling. But it very specifically fined this business because it hadn't done due diligence on its data suppliers. Again, uh, a really recent and interesting look at the way that regulators are looking at due diligence. And finally, you, you know, if you're in any sort of performance marketing, in the financial sector, you can't have failed to, to, to notice that the FCA are increasing the amount of communications around their, their campaign to tackle fraudulent and scam adverts. And so one of the things that I've said to all uh, lead generation uh, friends and clients is that if you generate financial services leads for any regulated product, pretty soon, I reckon it's gonna happen within the next year, you will have to become directly authorized. And so if you're 
watching this now and you're not directly authorized and you do want to generate mortgage or life insurance or health insurance leads, my advice to you is get in that queue pretty quickly because we expect in the next few weeks, the FCA to announce that all unauthorized lead generation will essentially be banned. Um, it's going to really change the way that this sector works, particularly for high value products like mortgage, investment and life insurance. So if the regulators are focused on due diligence, how are lead generators, how are lead buyers reacting to that? Well, the answer in America when the TCPA was brought out was that um, this, this, this concept called data certification was, was essentially uh, uh, invented and also flourished. And data certification allows a lead buyer to see exactly where a lead has come from, um, exactly what the consumer saw and what they essentially effectively consented to. And we took a look at data certification and how it might affect the insurance industry in the UK with LifeSearch, uh, one of the country's biggest life insurers. We wrote an entire white paper about the things that lead generators and lead buyers need to know about data certification. If you're interested in that, that's on our website and I'll, I'll provide the links when we're done with this talk. There are three businesses that are essentially providers of data certification. Um, one of them is clearly my own business um, and two, uh, two really good businesses based in the US. Now you might think it's odd. Why am I, why am I flagging up uh, my competitors on my talk? Well, it's because we're all doing the same thing. We've all got the same mission. We're trying to help lead generators stand out, legitimately generated, stand out from would-be fraudulent players. Um, and uh, you know, I, I won't go through it in detail, but these are some of the products and the features that lead generators, um, that these lead generation, uh, these, these data certification businesses offer. You've heard me talk now a few times about uh, my mission to essentially help good lead generators stand out from fraudulent lead generators. I think one of the big frustrations I had when I was generating leads for my own business was that we were directly authorized. We were UK based. We were paying all our taxes. We were selling leads exclusively. We were doing proper landing pages, but we were competing against fraudulent, sometimes off, over, overseas lead generators who would double sell or triple sell their leads, uh, who would incentivize their landing pages and who would lie to clients about, about where their leads were coming from. And it was a, a source of real frustration. And as I've said, that's where my business contact state, that's where the inspiration comes from. I think we need to go further and much quicker in separating, separating out the good lead generators from the would-be fraudulent lead generators. Uh, and as well as data certification, which clearly helps lead generators stand out. I think it's time that we got together uh, in, in something like they had the the, like the Leeds Council in America, I think we need, the, the, we need the equivalent, the UK Lead Generation Assembly. I've already highlighted that there's big regulatory change going on, but no lead generator has a seat at that table. There's no one, there's no one arguing for the way that lead generators, good, innovative marketeers are, should be protected. And so I think it's time that we organized ourselves in a way in which meant that we had a seat at the table at the ICO, at the ASA and at the FCA. Landing page fraud, uh, that is the, the copying of people's adverts, the copying of people's landing pages, um, is still rife. Well, I spoke to a, a client last week who said that they put up a, uh, put up a landing page and in the same day, the same HTML content was, was, was ripped off and, and, and rebranded for someone else. This shouldn't be beyond our ability to stop. And I think we need a forum from which we trade and are able to out those fraudulent lead generators who wish to copy other people's work. And then finally, I think yeah, a better organization, a better voice would enable us to gain better investment to this sector. You know, there's already been some great standout successes of venture, venture capital firms and private equity firms coming into the UK performance sector. But there's much, much more we can do to encourage that. And I think a professional body, uh, a membership organization would help us. So if you're interested in that, please drop me a line because I'm keen to get together some of the, the, the brightest businesses in the UK and, and, and form this and form this organization. Now we've talked a lot now about lead sellers. We've talked a lot about regulation and we've talked a lot about where we are as a, where we are as a, as a, as an industry. 
I want to talk now about lead buyers and what lead buyers need to do to fulfill their part of this bargain. So one of the things, and, and, and it's one of the things that I think uh, I know that if you sell leads, you will feel exactly the same way, is that the, the innovation of lead generation technology has come along so much in 10 years. Um, it's almost, you know, it's almost completely different to when, when I was, for example, uh, in California. But actually, many of the big lead buyers still, still use the same legacy CRMs. It still takes between two and four weeks, sometimes if you're lucky to integrate with buyers. There's still poor real-time responses where you're trying to correct the consumer on the landing page. You're not getting the right response out of the buyer. We don't have live feedback data. I'm gonna talk about performance in a second. And, we're, and it's, there's no flexibility in the way that these CRMs work. You know, There are life insurance and mortgage buyers that are still using the same forms that they were using in 2006 when I first started in lead generation. I think it's time that as a group and as a, as, as a, as a, as a, as a sort of union of lead generators that we start pointing out to, to lead buyers that if they want better leads, that they need to make investment into their own APIs. There are, there are brilliant businesses who do this for sellers. Uh, you've got, uh, for example, Leadbyte and Databol. I think, I think Simon's talking tomorrow. Um, these businesses are brilliant if you're a lead generator and you want to distribute leads, but it, it, but it breaks down when you get to old aging. APIs. Um, and, and we've helped a number of buyers, a number of our clients uh, come up with better strategies, a number of buyer clients come up with better strategies for how they take leads. So if you're struggling with a lead client and you, you, know, and you want some help and uh, try and help nudge them into a better practice, please get in touch. Because it really, it really, really matters. I think it, a responsive API will help lead generators make better decisions about where to send leads. Better inputs mean better outputs. Like you can, you can create a much better customer journey if you're able to work out what, what, how the advert and landing page is performing. And it's just quite frankly, much fairer on all parties to have up-to-date APIs that don't take weeks and weeks to integrate with. This is all part of the same challenge when I come to performance reporting. We've been working with a number of uh, buyers and specifically the life insurance industry. And one of the big challenges that my life insurance clients give me is how do we solve things like cancellation of life insurance policies? How do we solve things like really low average premiums? And I think there's a real tendency in the life insurance industry just to say yeah, search media, brilliant, everything else terrible. Clearly, that's not true. Clearly, there are some brilliant social media adverts. Clearly, there are some fantastic native placements. But because we don't get the right level of performance reporting, we're never able to actually prove that. I think performance data feedback is still, is still a bit of a dirty secret. I mean, I was selling leads as recently as two years ago, and I still used to get my sort of Excel spreadsheet full of really sensitive customer data and then outcomes that were six, seven weeks old. And that, that is still really commonplace with many lead buyers. The only performance reporting that any of us should ever deal with is real-time API uh, status updates that tells you when a lead goes from quote to sold to canceled to whatever it might be. Because we've shown that when we get into the detail in life insurance, we're able to use these inputs like I've got down here and actually optimize what, for example, medical looks like or a premium or commissions and track that back to individual keywords. There's a point here. We all want buyers to share really sensitive commercial information, but on the whole, lead generators don't want to share things like, for example, keyword strategy. I've said again and again, if someone wants to find out your keywords, all they need to literally do is go to SEMrush and download, uh, download what you were doing last week. I think we're too sensitive often about our, our, our advertising IP and that holds this innovation back. So I think it's time that we had honest conversations with buyers and said, look, we'll share this information if we're able to get much more detailed reporting information back from you. I think the, the, the most important thing of all of this and the thing that we're all clearly optimizing for is margin. Every lead buyer wants to work on a rev share, a split revenue commission deal, which only pays the lead generator if a sale is made. 
every lead seller clearly wants to be paid as much as possible upfront uh, and are able to optimize their campaigns accordingly. I think if I was selling leads, and I've had this conversation a number of times, there is absolutely no way I would sell my leads on a, on a rev share model unless I had an automated loop, unless I could see in real time how many times, for example, the buyer had called the lead or when was the first time to call. And so I think one of the ways in which we could make better return for lead generators is, for example, to nudge lead buyers into a much, much more advanced reporting loop that allows us to see the outcomes from individual placements and, and adverts. Um, and then also to have better conversations about why leads cost more in, for example, December, in, for example, August or during the, during the European Championships that are next month, as opposed to January and February. Right now, it all feels a bit finger in the air. I've got, to, I've, got to, I've got to put your lead price up this month because it's more competitive and no one really trusts each other. I think if we can build this automated performance loop, I think we can have a much more intelligent discussion about how we how we move forward with lead generation. I think there's a really exciting future for lead gen. I've already talked. I'm so so pleased that this conference has started today. I've spent so many so many years in sitting in New York and Las Vegas and thinking, well, why why have the Americans got a lead gen conference and we haven't? I think this is a really exciting time to be part of European lead generation. These are my three takeaways. Compliance is key. If compliance isn't your number one concern about what's gonna to happen to data, advertising and financial regulations, then you really need to think again. Compliance is gonna change everything that we know about the way that lead gen works and it's gonna do it really, really quickly. So it's time to be able to demonstrate your due diligence, your expertise in a really transparent and open manner. I think we as a group, as lead generators, we need to say to the lead generation buying industry that we're just not going to tolerate old fashioned creaking APIs. The innovation and the advances in online advertising now make it far, far, much easier to, to properly, uh, properly optimize the campaigns. We need real time performance. Um, and, and clearly that feel, fits into the consumer is going to get a much better outcome if we're able to target more effectively. Thanks for coming along today. Uh, we're going to put all the presentation and the links um, on our blog. Michael, Michael and the Lead Genwell team are clearly going to share that video. If anything comes up that, that you think, actually, I'd love to chat to Alan and the contact state team, please do so. And you've got my details there. And, um, and I'm happy to take any questions now. Yep. Over to you, Michael. Great job, Alan. Um, and and I'm, you know, it's it's really great to hear because I think that's uh, our missions are sort of aligned too about bringing you know the industry together uh, to to really help educate with best practices, create some more transparency and trust. So it was, it was a great presentation. Um, we, there are a few people that uh, do want to take you up on your um, getting together. And there never are. There never are. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Right. There, 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 there's some questions. There never is any questions. Never any questions. <laughs> I have. Uh, I do have one. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. Then we'll wrap up. Um, it was around being uh, direct, uh, directly authorized. You had mentioned yeah. uh, companies. What does that process sort of look like to be directly authorized and and go from there? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So the as there's, there's no there's no short way of answering it. So I'll, I'll give you the pricey the, the the summary. The FCA have <laughs> said that that that. Um, if you're going to be unregulated, um, if you're unregulated as it stands and you're going to be involved with financial promotions, the FCA have said that what they intend to do is make a lead buyer be responsible for your adverts. Now, for everything that I've just sort of talked about and everything that I've just, you know, documented, I think it's very unlikely that you're going to find lead buyers who willingly put their hand up and say, yeah, I'm going to lend you my authorization. You, you crack on. I think it's far more likely that it's going to, they're going to want to push that burden onto the to the to the lead seller, so I think what needs to happen. So I, so so I think there are two there are two things here. I think um, if a lead generator is going to be involved with financial promotions, and that's going to be the sole bit of their sort of work, becoming director authorized, what you need to do is work with an independent consultant. Uh, I mean, if you don't want to fill in these forms yourself, work with an independent consultant and. Um, and have them make the application on your behalf, and there'll be there'll be some there's some scrutiny that you've got to deal with, right? So you've got to deal with how do you how do you prove that each financial promotion you run 
has been signed off by a compliant person? How do you prove that you're a compliant person? It's, it's, a, it's a three to six month process, which is why I've sort of said, don't leave this to the last minute because everyone's going to be doing the same thing that, that you're doing. Uh, and is that with the, the second, ICO? Is that with the ICO? No, that's, that that's the FCA. No, that's the FCA. Okay, so FCA, I'm sorry. The, the, the financial conduct authority. The ICO is, is, is a sort of, you know, it's more of a voluntary sign up and pay some money, um, but you, you accept their terms and you accept to do, you know, accept their, what, they're, what they're saying. But there is a second part of the FCA bit, which is lead buyers may decide to lend you their authorization. They may say to you, okay, well, you can become an AR and an IAR of, of us, which is essentially a, an independent introducer. And you sit on their books. But the point there is, I think, increasingly, they're not going to do that unless they can actually have real time proof of where you're running these adverts, where you're running these landing pages. So, look, I think, uh, you know, there, there are going to be two routes, but I think they lead back to the same place. It's all going to be done around real time certification of, 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 of leads. Yep. Uh, another question that just came in here regarding the FCA, you know, you, you announced um, or you said that. The FCA will likely announce within weeks that lead generation uh, will be banned. How realistic is this? Is there a source for this? Or should lead generators diversify their product mix? No, I, 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 if I've said this should be banned, that, that's a, I've, I've either, I've either miss said that or it's, or, or, or have um, been misinterpreted, but lead generators won't be banned. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to, there's going to be the strengthening of this regulation. I mean, back in October, for example, they closed the consultation and they announced what's this called a, a new uh, a new financial promotions regulatory framework. I mean, if if you're ever having trouble sleeping, come and come and um, come and read my blog because uh, we've written all about it and we've got a whole load of stuff about what it is. They've announced that essentially that anyone running financial promotions would either need to be regulated by them or by the buyer. And so, in a sense, it's a sort of roundabout ban, if you like. Um, but look, there there are plenty of lead gen businesses in the UK that are directly authorised. Um, so there are some businesses like my previous business that, that, that sort of spotted this coming and said, okay, well, we need to get ahead of the game here. So it's not, uh, essentially the, the FCA haven't, haven't fulfilled their own rules. Okay. So their rules are, if you're running financial promotions, you need to be regulated in some way. They, for the last 10 years have sort of turned a blind eye to that. Um, and it's now that they're waking up. So these rules already exist. Now, um, Legion won't be banned, but I think it's going to look very, very different about how these adverts are approved it makes sense uh, i mean we can, we can't have um you know unauthorized or unapproved ads with with rates or offers that aren't realistic uh out in the marketplace i mean look you're buying a mortgage you're taking a life insurance policy you're taking an investment product out these are some of the biggest purchases you'll ever make in your entire life and i think to up to this point we've sort of been like well it's leads you know we've talked about this before michael on your podcast you know, I could go and set up a lead generation website today and be trading mortgage leads today. I mean, that's 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 not that's not the appropriate level of, of regulation for such a sensitive product, in my view. Um, mm. And I think a lot of the FCA's uh, thinking here comes because of the fallout of London Capital and Finance uh, (LCF), which was a, an investment business that was essentially hiring introducers to run unregulated investment adverts. Investors there lost, I think, I think over two hundred million pounds. Um, so, a lot of the action that's coming out of the FCA is in reaction to the LCF crisis. Yeah, makes sense. Well, I appreciate it. Now, if anybody wants, uh, again, you had your information up, but um, you know, all these questions come up. Uh, uh, if, if someone's watching it uh, now recorded, um, they can reach back, rewind and get your, uh, your contact information and reach out to you. I want to thank you again for, for kicking off this show, because um, like I said, your, your goals and, and, and your views is very much in line with the show. And so I appreciate it. Um, again, if you're watching this uh, uh, recorded or live, you can reach out to Alan with more questions. Um, we'll be getting going on, on our next session at the top of the hour. So hopefully we'll see some of you folks on that one as well. So thanks again, Alan. Thanks, Michael.